Hey everybody, uh, the short answer to this video is yes, you can. However, it's gonna change your financing terms, um, you know, since we gotta know uh, what your real intention of uh, using the house for is upfront before you make the purchase. If you do intend to rent this out, then it's going to increase your rate and or closing costs and um, increase the minimum allowable down payment on the home. Uh, basically, if you wanna buy a house and get the primary owner occupied designation to get the better financing terms. Um, you know, recall here to my um, primary, secondary, or uh, investment home video. Um, if you wanna get the best financing terms, then there's a 12 month rule up front. So this 12 month rule is uh, that when you sign at closing, then you're signing that piece of paper saying that, hey, you know, I do intend to live in this house full time as my primary owner occupied residence uh, for at least the first 12 months. Um, after that, they don't really care what you do with it. But if you sign that piece of paper, knowing that you're gonna get out of it right away and try and rent it out to somebody else, just you know, put it in somebody else's uh, hands uh, as a tenant, then that's mortgage fraud. Um, the FBI does look for that. Um, it's not like, you know, it's, you know, they're, they're, their biggest target in the world. And, um, you know, they're, what are the, what are the chances of them actually coming after you? Yeah. I'm not trying to encourage this by any means, but, um, be careful. You don't want to do that. Um, this is a big purchase and you could get in a lot of trouble, but, um, if you buy the house and within 12 months, uh, you have some sort of unexpected situation come up where, oh, you got to go, you know, after five months of being in the home, having owned it for, you know, within less than a year, um, you got to go be with your family somewhere because there's an emergency, your parents are getting old and they need you, or you t get a new job uh, halfway across the country, or maybe even like, you know, several, just several hours away. Um, and you got to move out of the house for a legitimate reason, then that's fine. They're not going to come in, uh, come down on you for mortgage fraud in that case. So rest assured, if there is some unforeseen circumstance that comes up that makes you move out of the house, it's okay. You, you don't have to worry about um, uh, being prosecuted for that. But uh, guys, there's a reason uh, for the increased pricing structure uh, if the home is designated as a rental property beforehand. And, you know, we do our homework on you uh, beforehand to make sure that you know everything here makes sense, that this really is gonna be uh, a primary residence for you. The underwriter's gotta buy it. Um, but if you live in a home and you're gonna occupy it full time, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac know that it's statistically far more likely uh, for the home payments to be made on time every month. Uh, when people buy a home and they rent them out to other tenants, then uh, those tenants aren't on the loan. They're going to be, um, you know, less incentivized to make the home payments for you every month. And so they're going to have a far greater likelihood of having late payments, delinquencies, defaults, foreclosures. Uh, so Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they increase the pricing structure on these homes that are designated as rental or investment properties um, because they know that they're going to have to deal with the cost of the riffraff afterwards. And again, like I said earlier, uh, the interest rate is then either going to be uh, increased significantly um, or the closing cost will be, um, or you could even take a combination of both. And it's always um, just like on every loan, it's your choice uh, what rate and closing cost combination you really pick. Um, also, uh, the down payment on a traditional conforming conventional loan on a primary residence, um, you know, usually like three or 5%, you can either do. Uh, you can also do zero down loans there too. Uh, but on a rental or investment property, the minimum is 15% down. Uh, doing 20% down improves your pricing substantially. And then I would say doing 25% down is kind of the sweet spot. That's usually where people want to be. Uh, but guys, that's basically what you need to know uh, about that concept, that scenario. And, uh, you know, I've made this video just because I literally got asked this question two times in a three hour period when I was at my pool the other weekend. So I'm just making these to answer your questions. If you got something that you want me to cover uh, in some sort of concept video like this, 
drop me a line in the comments below. It's that easy, and I will see you on the next one, guys. Thank you.